when it was midday on the ship, measured by the sun being directly ahead, all they'd need to do is look at their clock and look at the time difference. And knowing that the Earth rotated 15 degrees per hour, they could work out their longitude. Now, it was so important, the problem of navigation at sea. In 1714, the British government, fed up with all the ships that they'd lost, smashed against rocks, all the treasure that had been lost, all the lives that had been lost. Offer the prize, one million pounds in today's money, to the person who could devise a clock that would be accurate to within three seconds a day. That's equivalent to 30 miles on a trip from the United Kingdom to Jamaica and back. Now this prize money remained, un remained uncollected for many, many years until this man, John Harrison, entered on the scene. Now John Harrison knew nothing about navigation. He was a woodworker from Lincolnshire. But he's obsessed with building clocks. In fact, he tried three versions of a clock to try and solve this problem. And here we have his first clock. It's actually a replica and it's going to be shown in a TV drama of the longitude story to be shown in the new year. But we have it here for this lecture. It's really quite elaborate. It had to be to correct for all the errors of this rolling ship. But if you notice, it's still based on the design of a pendulum. In fact, his first three clocks were and it wasn't until he realized that he should abandon the idea of the pendulum. He developed something which is actually the forerunner of the modern watch. And this is what it looked like. And it won him the prize money. In fact, when Neil Armstrong, the first man on the moon, was at a cocktail party in number 10 Downing Street, just after the lunar landing, he toasted Harrison for his contributions to navigation. Now back on land, things were heating up. It was the Industrial Revolution. Steam engines, industry, production, things were getting faster, people were moving around more. And they had a different set of problems that had to be solved. Here Ilya's brought on a model of the UK, and we can see on the bottom a model train. Imagine this train's going from London to Penzance. Let's set it off on its journey. Whoops, gets there quite quickly. But there's a strange thing in Penzance. I mentioned before about the rotation of the Earth. So the Sun will actually change its position during that journey. So midday at London is different from midday at Penzance. In fact, there's 30 minutes difference. So imagine what it must have been like getting on a train in London, turning up in Penzance and finding not only did you have the time for the journey, but it was also a different time. Here we have something that's been loaned to us from the National Railway Museum in York, which is an original chronometer, which was carried on the train. This would be used to set the station clock. The station clock would be used to set the town clock, and then everybody in the town would take their time from that. And this is the way that synchronization got carried across the country. And it meant that people could do away with timetables as shown here, that had two times in them, local time and London time. But this problem of synchronization didn't just affect the railways, it was also very important in industry. But if you think about it, what's 
time got to do with industry? Imagine we've got a factory. What, why do we care about time other than when people start work and when people finish work? What's that got to do with it? Well, I need some volunteers to help me show this. Maybe five of you, four of you here and somebody on the end. If you'd like to come up here and stand along the front. Welcome to the factory. We make sweets, okay? And your name is? Danny. Danny, I've got some bad news. This factory has no motor. You are the motor. You are the engine that is to drive our factory. So would you put on these gloves? That's it. Your name is? Rachel. Rachel. Very important job, Rachel. You're in charge of placing the containers on the conveyor belt. And you are? Felicity. Felicity. You've got to fill the containers. Richard. Richard. You're the top man. Forward. Just place them behind you. Tom, your quality control and packing. Okay. So, Danny, would you like to come around here? What we're going to do is we're going to start this conveyor belt and we're going to pack sweets. So, as we start up this conveyor belt, very slowly, do just start placing the containers one by one onto the conveyor belt and just fill them up with sweets. The trouble is, things got a little bit more competitive. There were more factories. So we had to produce things faster. Quickly, quickly, we've got, we've got products to deliver. Everyone's waiting for their sweets for Christmas. Keep going. How are you getting on in quality control? Badly. Okay. Okay, well, well done. Thanks very much. Right, uh... So I think we see the problem. In industry, in packaging, Synchronization is actually very, very important. And synchronization needs accurate timing. In fact, what's happened, as industries become more and more advanced, the need for more and more accurate timing has increased. In order for all of these components to be put, in this case, into cars, in order and quickly, we need accurate timing and synchronization, even more so in high-tech industries. But what about our own time? How do we measure time? Well, I use this quartz watch, and I saw that at the beginning of the lecture, many of you do as well. We use watches. And it was earlier on this century that the shift away from mechanical clocks to something almost moving back to nature occurred with the development of this. The quartz crystal is very tiny, probably hardly see it. The quartz crystal. What happens here is very quite, really quite interesting. You pass a current through this crystal and it vibrates. Very much like the pendulum swinging is also an oscillation or vibration. This vibrates, but very, very quickly. And the fact that it's vibrating so quickly means that by counting a large number of oscillations, you can define a second. But there's a problem even with this. And for this, I need some jellies. Now, think of these as quartz crystals. 